Hi, my name is Mahesh Nagi Raddi, technical marketing engineer focusing on Cisco Software Defined Access. Cisco SD Access Supplicant Based Extended Node is a new feature to onboard extended node devices connected to fabric edges over a closed authenticated port. Fabric edge node act as an authenticator switch and the extended node devices act as a supplicant switch and this is to ensure that the supplicant switch is allowed network access only if it authenticates successfully. Here are the release prerequisites. Uh, so please do ensure that you're running the releases called out on this slide or later for this feature to successfully work. So the first prerequisite under the Cisco DNS Center is the, is the PNP device authorization setting. So please make sure you enable device authorization so that when the supplicant switch does a call home back via PNP to Cisco DNS Center, you have an option on the PNP workflow to authorize the device or to onboard a device. The next prerequisite is under the host onboarding section when you select an authentication template, please ensure that it's closed auth and, and the BPDU guard is disabled so that when the supplicant switch gets connected to the authenticator switch, the port doesn't go into error disabled state because of the BPDU guard. So the next prerequisite is when you add extended node pool into an infra VN, please ensure that the supplicant based extended node is enabled so that the DNS center pushes down the respective templates to the authenticator switch. So the last but not the least, the PKI certificate. So please ensure that you download the CA cert from Cisco DNS Center uh, and later you have to upload this back onto Cisco ICE so that when the supplicant switch authenticates with ICE, ICE has the certificate chain. Let's take a quick uh, look at the ICE prerequisites. So the first prerequisite is when you import the Cisco DNS Center certificate to the ICE trust or ensure that the the trust for client authentication and syslog is, is, is checked. We have to create three authorization profiles on ICE, the S-Band DHCP, the limited access and the, and the full access. And let's take a quick look at the contents of these authorization profiles. So the S-Band uh, DHCP, here are the attribute details for, for, for this particular authorization profile. The S-Band limited access, here are the attribute details. Make sure you match these when you create one and the SBEN full access, here are the attribute details for this particular profile. So the next is to, is to edit a Cisco switch profile on, on ICE and the only condition we have to include in this profile is this DHCP vendor class containing the respective switch type. So since in my lab, I, I would be using a Catalyst 9300, I have a condition here which matches the DHCP VI vendor class containing 9300 and I've also selected the certainty factor for that condition as well. So next we will create a child profiler policy with the parent policy as Cisco switch and here are the conditions to match and make sure this child policy has certainty factor higher than the parent policy. When it comes to re-authentication, the change of authorization type by default is no COA, so ensure that it's set to re-auth. When it comes to the policy sets, we have to edit the current authentication policy for MAB. When a user is not found, ensure that it's set to continue and you do not select any other options. And when it comes to authorization policies, we do create three separate authorization policy sets. DHC has been DHCP, the limited access one and full access one, and here are the conditions to match so that when the switch authenticates, matches these three different policies. Okay, since we have gone through the prerequisites, let's go take a look at how to onboard the supplicant base extended node. There are some additional configurations which I just wanted to show you under the respective site E. I do have fabric built. I do have uh, fabric roles enabled. So that's our authenticator switch, the EFE one. And under this particular fabric zone, I've already enabled the infra VN and that's the pool, which also has the supplicant base extended node flag enabled. So now let's wait. And I've also reset the switch to factory default. So that's the switch console. So let's wait for the switch to call back and authenticate itself to ICE. And let's uh, also monitor the plug and play page so that when the device gets an IP address, it does a call home so that we should be able to see the device here and authorize the device. Here's the device log, uh, switch currently getting some limited access, switch 
this applicant switch got an IP address 71.5 and along with that it also got the DNS center IP address which is 192.168.1.2 so that it can now call home back via plug and play shortly we should see the switch shown on the PNP page on the Cisco DNS center there's the switch that's the port to which the supplicant switch is connected so here you can see that it's done a basic map to start with and it's got uh, some limited access and there's a template which has been pushed as well okay let's go ahead and authorize the switch so select the switch go to actions and authorize it so that it gets onboarded onto the inventory and through this onboarding process, uh, DNAC will ensure that it pushes the basic configurations and along with that it also pushes down the respective certificate to the switch. Give it some more time for DNAC to onboard the device and show up in the inventory. There's a switch which is successfully added to inventory. Let's also take a quick look on the ICE to make sure that the device is added into the ICE network device list as well that's the switch let's take a quick look at the fabric status that's the device extended node it's still not fully fabric onboarded so we have to wait for a few more minutes There you can see on ICE logs now the switch moved from a limited access to full access and let's take a quick look at the authenticator switch port. There you could see the, I, the switch moved from a MAB authentication to dot one x and now it has full network access and it's fully authorized as well. There you go, the supplicant switch is fully onboarded to the fabric. It's also come up with an extended node role as well. I'm taking a quick look at the locks, that's the full access. I hope that was informative, thank you.